Imagine your Nationals MP, Pat Conaghan. You've stood up in Parliament to give a speech, a very measured and reasonable speech, about why you opposed the voice to Parliament. Here's a little taste of what he had to say. This bill conflates two entirely separate issues. Firstly, the recognising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the Australian Constitution, a point upon which we all agree and that does not see, have unforeseen consequences. And secondly, support for a constitutionally enshrined Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander advisory body, a point that is a cause for concern for many. Well, if you were Mr Conaghan, you might have been a little bit surprised to wake up the next morning and find an email in your inbox from New South Wales Supreme Court Judge Ian Harrison, who had this to say to Mr Conaghan. I'm not one of your electors, so my opinion on anything has no direct bearing upon you electoral status. However, I was moved while listening to you speak to write to you now to express my complete sadness, not that you have predictably taken the stand that you have. Have, but you obviously do not understand or appreciate the depths of paternalism and racism that oozed from your words. <laughs> now, this email was sent at about half past eight in the morning, so we assume the good judge was as sober as a judge at the time. But you watch the clip there. There was no oozing of racism. He was purely saying, and it's entirely true, that the federal government is conflating the idea of constitutional recognition of Indigenous people with the voice. And of course, the reason they're doing that is because the constitutional recognition is the stalking horse to get the voice through. But what on earth is a Supreme Court justice doing sending off emails like this to a member of parliament when he may very well be in a position one day where he has to deal with something that comes before the court that has something to do with the voice. We'd like to think that he can take an impartial point of view on that. We know every judge and every person who's walking the planet has a personal opinion, but when you're a judge, you don't nail those colours to the mast, particularly in a letter to an MP. Well, I think you've hit the pertinent point. There's two things you want from a Supreme Court justice. You want good judgment and you want impartiality. Well, sending that email was clearly very poor judgment. It's ended up in the media. And uh, we now all know what he thinks of The Voice. So, God forbid, he's ever called upon to exercise judgment in a court case about anything to do with The Voice. Yeah, well, I bet he wasn't end <laughs> thinking it would end up on the sky and in several newspapers. Poor bloke. He may well have walked this back if he'd have known. But they're hysterics. They always come from the yes camp, whether it's Lydia Thorpe standing on the Victorian Parliament steps screaming, this is war, whether it's Stan Grant writing in the Australian, whiteness is a curse, whether it's Noel Pearson on absolutely every, any given day, really. It's always coming from the yes camp. And I... Can I say, I reckon there's extremism on both sides, but, but I do think you're right that a lot of the, the crazy rhetoric comes from very prominent people mm. on the yes side, as opposed to the no vote, where there's some people say some silly things, but... Not you're just talking about voices. Twitter comments and that kind of thing by people that you've seen in, in the no camp. The, most of the prominent no campaigners are quite measured. You get Correct. some extreme around the fringes. Yeah. But with the yes campaign, some of the key voices are quite extreme. I yeah. think that's a bit but different. I, but I just the... haven't encountered any extremists from the no because we're simply arguing facts in that this appears to be more than they would yeah. have us believe as a foot. But that's the point of how you end up here, with a Supreme Court justice calling someone racist because they've dared to point out that they're conflating constitutional right. recognition, which he said he supported, by the way, with the voice. In what world is that racist? And that's the point, that if you dare to say that you are opposed to the voice, which is a, a, a chamber or a body, as opposed to saying that, you know, I hate Aboriginal people, that is supposedly racist. That's the extremities of where the argument's gone. And we already yeah. know, that should it get up, this will be a dog's breakfast in terms yeah. of the judiciary, because yeah. our own High Court, which are the biggest brains in the country as far as I'm concerned, they're divided on it. So if we can't get a consensus among them, I'm sorry, I just, I don't see any hope at the end of that tunnel. Agree, absolutely. Absolutely.